Hello! We're continuing the narrow the focus phase of the scientific method this week as we think about how the knowledge from the articles comes together. We'll be using the notes from each of the article summary assignments as well as the citations and references. Thinking about the notes from the article summary assignments, I want to revisit a point I've made in a couple of other places. That we're thinking about what we know given the findings of the articles. Another way to think about it is that we don't want to just paraphrase results. We want to synthesize the ideas. It's a fancy way of saying we want to think about something bigger than just the specific relationship between the variables reported in the article. The example in this slide includes the results from Schifrin and Nelson, with a few possibilities of how they can be used to support a bigger idea. We're going to use those ideas in the introduction section. In APA style, we explain the structure of the section as being like a funnel. The first paragraph, or sometimes paragraphs, introduce the main ideas, also known as the conceptual variables, and help the reader understand why it's important. Then we transition into more specific information where we talk about what we know from other work, also known as literature review. That's organized in a way that leads to the hypothesis, a specific prediction of the relationship between two variables. We'll start by writing a paragraph for the beginning of that section. In other words, a paragraph that introduces the two variables we want to eventually hypothesize about and why they're of interest. Part of the grading criteria for the paragraph is related to that content, as noted in this slide, and explained in much more detail in the assignment sheet. Here's one example of how those criteria can be represented in a paragraph. This is from one of the articles you read, or you might have read. The words in green are the variables. If you read this article, you might remember that, that they hypothesized that a particular stress reduction technique would reduce indicators of stress. The words in the red are why we care. Note that they use citations to support each of the main ideas, including the definition of stress. These examples, from Chow and from Naomi Preston and So, help illustrate one of the things about APA style that is a challenge for a lot of students, especially when we're talking about a topic like stress. More specifically, it's a challenge not to make broad statements based on our own knowledge. In APA style, if a statement of fact isn't supported by a citation, it's considered a generalization. And generalizations are not used in APA style. So, when we're writing about stress, it's tempting to make a statement along the lines of, all college students are stressed. But that would need to be supported by a citation, like it is in the first sentence of the top paragraph in this slide. We would assume, then, that the information about the sources of stress in the following sentence was supported by the same source. The phrase I underlined in the lower paragraph is an example of how we might say stress is bad for us. In that case, the supporting article is footnoted. Speaking of which, the grading criteria for the introduction paragraph also includes points for citations and references. The grading criteria highlight each of the parts of the APA style formatting that you'll need to take into account. Make sure to review my feedback from the related assignments so you know what needs to be corrected to avoid losing points.